I'm Danny, and this is my channel Pocket or Two. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Um, today I'm doing um, a little bit of a different video. This is my first Sew With Me style video. So a few weeks ago I made the paper cut pattern Sapporo coat, which I'm wearing now. Um, and I filmed along through the different steps and processes whilst I made it. So I thought I would share that process. It's my first time making a fully lined coat. I've made a couple of fully lined jackets before. Um, but this is my first, it feels like my first real proper kind of coat. Um, so I wanted to film along and take people through that process with me and hopefully there might be some things that are helpful um, in there as well. So um, I'll hand you over to past me um, shortly but first I thought I would just talk through um, the coat itself. So obviously I'm wearing it. Um, it's made from um, a next designer wool that I got from Fabric Godmother. Um, it's it's got a kind of, it's got a little bit of drip, but it's still quite sturdy, so it holds the shape. And the Sapporo coat is quite a structured jacket. I'm going to insert some um, footage at some point of me uh, wearing the coat properly. Um, uh, so, but it's got a really nice shape to it. Obviously, the things like the grown-on sleeves are a really um, nice element to it. And also, the pockets are in here. Again, I'll show photos. Are in the side seams, uh, not side seams. Are in seams in the front body piece, which is really, really nice. And um, the lining is silk. Um, it's a silk from Sherwood Fabrics, um, again I got at a discount of price, um, it's my first time sewing with silk, I was really brave with this. I don't, it moved a little bit when I cut it, I don't think I cut it completely perfectly but it's absolutely wearable, it doesn't look too wonky um, and no one really sees the inside of your coat apart from when you flash it to take it off. Speaking of which, um, it's quite a nice warm sunny day today so I am going to take this off now so that I don't roast whilst I talk to you. So a little bit about the pattern, so it's paper cut patterns. Um, they've recently revised the pattern and I've bought the revised version of it. Um, so I bought it as a PDF, um, I got it printed from the fold line, this is not an advert, this is just um, what I did. And the fold line provides you with um, these envelopes uh, where you can write, obviously I've not written a lot on it, I've just written Sapporo at the moment, um, which you can keep all your pattern pieces in once you've cut them, which I really like. And I've actually just received some more patterns from them um, for other things. So I tend to nowadays, I'll get the, if I buy PDF patterns, anything that's large, coats, jeans, um, dresses I will get printed now um, and I will just cut them out from the um, from the paper pattern that's been printed I don't tend to um, trace them because I think well if I need a different size I'll just order them get them printed again and cut them it just saves time I'm not a big fan of sticking together millions of pages of PDF patterns and I'm not a fan of tracing it just cuts a little bit of time for me so that's what I did with this one um, with the pattern you cut all the pieces on the flat as well um, rather than on the fold um, and you will see in my video that there's um, a, a clip of me cutting on the living room floor with the puppy behind the baby gate um, kind of watching. So that's obviously quite a task to cut everything out. Um, I made a mistake. I cut the back piece, um, which is meant to be, it's, it's a little bit confusing because the piece says cut on the fold, but obviously you're cutting it on the flap. So what you do is you just flip it over and mirror it um, to keep it as one piece. And for some reason, I cut it as two pieces out of the wool. Um, when I came to do the lining, I didn't do that, but I still hadn't realised that I'd done it on the wool piece um, until later. Thankfully, I had enough wool 
to recut the piece. Um, if I hadn't, I would have probably had to do something strange um, and magical to uh, attach it back together again and have like a seam line down the back. I'm sure it would have been fine, but just a note for everyone, when you are cutting out the pattern pieces, do check which ones have that kind of fold line. I think just because the fabric wasn't folded and I was cutting it out on the flat, um, that's how that occurred. Um, I think I was quite keen to get on with the project as well and sometimes you just kind of, you don't read things properly. Um, what else? I'm just trying to think. Um, I I absolutely love my coat. I can't tell you how pleased I am with it. I wear it, I'm wearing it constantly. Um, uh, it's so colourful, it's so bright, I love the style of it, I want to make more, I want to make a cropped one. After I finished it I was kind of starting to think, okay, what um, what kind of fabric can I make the next one out of? I know that that's not um, necessarily so practical, but I do, I do, do really, really love it. I love the style of it as well. One of the things that I was a little bit unsure about was not having a fastening on it because it's an open fronted coat. You can kind of pull it around you. You could wear it with a belt. You could add something, um, you know, like a, a clasp that hooks between. You could even add a button if you wanted. Um, I didn't want to add a button to it once it was finished because I didn't want to spoil the aesthetic of it. I like how it, um, how it sits. Um, but actually I've worn it quite a lot and in in the rain, in the cold um, and I haven't really felt like oh I really wish that this was fastened up fully. I think because I've made it out of wool um, it feels warm and kind of weatherproof anyway and I just pull it together if I was really battling the rain in it or something. I would wear my raincoat if it was really heavy rain anyway. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind if you don't think um, that you can wear a coat without a fastening. Think about how you might want to adapt um, the pattern to add a fastening or um, whether or not this pattern is for you. Um, I found it such a straightforward sew. Um, you'll see in the clips kind of the points where I had a little moment of, okay, how does this work? But other than that, um, it was a really great pattern. The instructions are brilliant. Um, I found it an enjoyable sew. I thoroughly enjoyed sewing this. Um, and sometimes when you take on a big project halfway through, you might wish that you hadn't started. And actually, um, that wasn't the case at all with this. I really enjoyed it. I think that's pretty much everything that I need to say to you here at the start. So I've tried to film kind of most steps um, and take you through. This is not a thorough so along. I am not an expert in techniques. You can see at the points where I say to you, I think this is how I do this. Um, but hopefully it gives you, um, it might help if you're making the Sapporo to, to sew along um, with me. And, um, and there might be some steps that hopefully I've illuminated a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just want to share the process. I absolutely love the coat, um, I give it a massive thumbs up. The pattern is brilliant and I just, my fabric choices, I'm so pleased. And there will definitely be more Sapporo's. So I'm gonna hand you over to past me now um, and take you through the stages. What I will do is I will also insert some footage of me wearing the coat so that you can see uh, the full length and how it moves and drapes. Okay, enjoy and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hi everyone. I'm not going to talk through the cutting process on this video, but just to show you that this is how I cut on my living room floor. Um, and I've got Gruffy here as well, overseeing at a safe distance. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut everything out and then I'll start to talk through the kind of my process of sewing. Okay, bye. So I've now got all my pieces cut out, I've cut out the main fabric, I've got my lining pieces cut out and I am getting ready to do the first stage which is to iron on um, all the interfacing. 
So one of the things that I want to say um, about cutting out the fabric, obviously it's taken quite a while. There are not loads of pieces um, to this pattern in terms of um, for each uh, part, for the outer and for the lining. But what I have noticed is that um, you have to cut it out on the flat or they recommend that, which I think takes more time than cutting things on the fold. But due to the nature of the fabrics, this is a wool, this is an ex-designer wool from Fabric Godmother, which is gorgeous. My lining is silk. Um, I got it from Sherwood's Fabrics. Um, and it was a good deal, so I was so careful with the silk. I'm no, I, I don't think that there is um, no movement. I think there will be movement um, in how I've cut it out, but I did try my best, so let's just see. So um, the first thing to do now is to start to press my interfacing onto these pieces. I'm not going to film this. Um, you all know what that comprises of. I will say that I, um, I think it was in the Love to Sew podcast uh, when I was listening to it a while ago, I recommended that you um, press the interfacing with steam. So I think some people believe that you shouldn't do that or you assume that you shouldn't use steam, but actually they recommend it and just hold the iron on and keep it pressed. If you can hear the noises in the background, that's the puppy. Okay, I'll come back to you a little bit later on. So I have now... Um, pressed all the fusing onto the outer fabrics um, and I just wanted to mention a couple of things um, that might be useful in um, making a cut. So first of all I've got my clapper out, I've been using it to press the interfacing on, it just um, it helps to flatten seams but it also absorbs some of the heat as well so you can give a good press. Um, and the other thing that I will no doubt be using is my tailor's ham, which um, I just made myself. It's stuffed with uh, sawdust. Um, I used a pattern from the Merchant and Mills, um, one of their books, but there are different um, patterns out there, probably free ones as well. For some reason, my ham is quite narrow and I did use their measurements. Um, I've also got um, a narrow sleeve press as well, but I've not got that out um, which I can use but these might come in handy if you've got them um, for coat making especially um, because I'm using this wool which is um, fairly thick so next job is to figure out um, which thread I'm going to use and do some test runs before I sew into my best fabric okay see you in a bit Okay, so I'm just doing a test set. So I kept a bag of scraps um, from cutting out here. Um, I'm just going to do a test. So, so I have used a 90 needle from um, just a standard, uh, the 90 or the 14 needle, um, because I'm going to be um, sewing through two layers of thick wool. And I have done, I've used these settings if you can see them, so 2.8 stitch um, you know just to make it a little bit longer because it's going to have to go through a lot and actually if I try and do this one handed okay let's have a look the stitching if we can see it in focus appears to be okay I don't think it's going to focus um, for me to be able to show you that but it looks I can tell you that it looks pretty good actually maybe um, I could maybe adjust the tension slightly, but it's looking pretty good. So that's where we are. I've decided to use this orange thread just because of the orange in um, in the wool. The lining is more pink and red, so I'm wondering whether to change it to pink when I get to the lining, but I will worry about that when I get there. 
Okay, so that is everything for now. Okay, so I'm just about to pin um, my first pieces together and the one thing that I was going to say is that instead of using pins, I'm going to use Wonder Clips. Um, these are quite handy for bulkier fabrics, so I'm just going to clip this first seam together and see how it works um, but these are great for things like bag making as well when you're just dealing with a kind of um, a thicker fabric and as I'm using wool it's easier to do this and to try to get the pins through everything Yeah, there's quite a curved seam at this point so just make sure that you match in when you sew this is my first time sewing the Sapporo so things could go <laughs> wrong um, I will also confess to you that I didn't look at the pattern properly um, because it's on the flat the pieces uh, because it's cut on the flat, there are pieces that say cut on fold and you basically double them up um, next to each other and I didn't do that. I cut them as separate pieces, I cut the back piece as a separate piece so just be warned about that. Okay, let's give this a whirl. be careful around this curved seam at the start. I think it might be easier for me to start at this side. So the seam allowance is one centimetre for this pattern and what I tend to do is take, um, it's just write that at the top of the page um, on my printed pattern. It just, when I come back to make things, I can, it just means that I can find the information easier. Let me just move this around. I always start with my needle down. down it also makes it easier for you to pivot around specific points so this is the last seam need to be a bit careful on this curved this is also my first time sewing not sewing filming a sew along or a sew with me video so apologies if the 
camera angle isn't perfect. I'm certainly not an expert in sewing. But I thought it would be fun. There's quite a few of you seemed interested when I did the Instagram poll. So. Okay, let's have a look. That looks pretty good. Let's hope I've sewn it on the right way around. Okay, I'm going to sew the next section without filming and I'll get back to you when I get to the next tricky bit okay okay so I'm just pressing the seams now so just to show you how I use um, the tail of Sam is I'm just pressing the seam open lots lots of steam something like wool and then this is where your clapper might come in useful just to give that extra bit of pressure okay so on this one lots of steam okay let me just take the clapper just to help Press that seam open as it's a curved seam. Um, the tailor's ham really just helps with that. Okay, so this is the um, first seam pressed, and this is a pocket bag. I'm already really excited that the uh, pocket's in. I'm literally on step one, and I'm already excited. Um, about this coat. Okay, I'm gonna do the um, same for the other side now. Okay, so the next step is to pin the backs on. I'm just gonna do this and stitch this stage up. I'll come back to you when there's something um, a little more complex to discuss. So the next step is to pin the sides and the shoulders together of the front and back pieces so I'm just doing that now I'm going to sew those together so far this has been a really straightforward um sew which I'm really pleased about the instructions are clear um and there's nothing being too tricky the main thing really I think is when the seams curve is just to make sure that you um pin them or clip them into shape um, and be careful when you're sewing and then when you press, you press those cur curves and also clip into them as well as the instructions say. So this is obviously the inside of the pocket bag. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I'm just going to sew these up and then I will come back and I should have um, the kind of the outer shell of the coat by then. Okay. Um, so I've just propped you up. This is what I've got so far. So I'm quite pleased. The pockets are there. Obviously there's um, this will be tucked under so I quite like the length. Um, yeah and these unfolding. I'm absolutely loving the wool. I'm really pleased with it um, and it will look something like this. So this is where we are so far. Far. Okay, so I've started on the sleeves now, which is the next step. So <clears throat> what I've done is I've done the next two stages, which is to sew the sleeves together and the sleeve facings, and I'm going to press them now. So sometimes what I do is I will sew a few things and then take them to press if rather than kind of sew, then press, and sew, then press. So that is the next step. Okay, so I've just got to the point where I am attaching the sleeve facing to the sleeve. Now, because um, I've chosen wool and I've also interfaced it as per the instructions, you might have to manipulate it a little bit to get it to fit. It feels like the sleeve opening is a little bit um, larger than the facing. So just to show you, I'm just kind of pulling it a little bit, stretching it slightly in order to clip it. I 
think when you sew this, you're going to have to be really careful, or I'm going to have to be really careful, if other people are using wool and experiencing a similar thing, just to kind of pull it between the clips and keep it tight when you're sewing so that you make sure that that's lined up and keep obviously the seams lined up together. It might be worth putting a few extra clips in there as I'm going to do just to kind of hold it in position and just take this section a little bit slowly with the sewing in order to do that. Let's see how that turns out. Just pulling tightly. from this angle but it has stitched in nicely okay so the next step is oh, to trim the seam allowance in half so like so about that much um, and then you're going to under stitch this part the remaining seam allowance to the facing which just means that you press it up and you'll stitch on here so it won't be seen obviously on the outside of the jacket sleeve it will be seen on the inside and it'll keep that facing from rolling out so that is what I'm going to do next just to show you how I'm under stitching, if you can see here, um, little focus, I'm kind of stitching just next to the other row because the wool is fraying a little bit, it's not quite catching at all the points but I think that this will be good enough, I'm not an expert on things like under stitching, um, so I think this should be okay for my first attempt. Um, let's just see if I can do this. Okay, so that gives you an idea. It's not easy to do one-handed, so I'm going to put the camera down and do this on the next sleeve. Okay, so I've pressed the um, sleeves now, I've understitched them. Now the next instruction says to stitch the sleeve facing seam allowance to the sleeve seam allowance with a couple of stitches two centimetres from the edge to hold securely in place. So I'm assuming that I'm stitching somewhere around here and um, just a couple of stitches I'm not sure if I'm meant to hand stitch or machine stitch I might just I don't like hand stitching I might just run it under the machine so I'm just going to pop a couple of stitches here or well I should say not on the outside but here maybe it's easier to hand stitch so you do the two allowances together just to enclose it if that makes sense. I hope that's showing up for you. Okay, so these are the sleeves completed. Um, I'm really pleased with the pattern matching. I haven't pattern matched the rest of the coat because I wasn't quite sure how 
it all fit together and I didn't know if I'd have enough fabric but these are the sleeves done so they've been understitched to the facing here I'm not sure how long that's being picked up by the camera okay let's try again so they've been understitched here and then what I've done is in terms of anchoring the hem see if I can do this one handed I've just put a couple of stitches on the machine so it's not very tidy but no one's going to see it apart from anyone watching this but when I wear it no one will see it there's a couple of stitches just stitching the facings to the sleeve so you can see here they don't move they won't pull out but they've been pressed as well so the next step is to stitch these sleeves into the um, body of the coat which looks quite straightforward and then I will be back okay hi there I'm just picking up on the second day of sewing the coat now so this morning um, I stitched the arms to the um, body of the coat and then I left it so I'm just pressing um, the seams down now and then I'm going to move on to the next step so just while I'm pressing I thought I would show you the insides of the sleeve so this is the facing um, that's been unstitched it's tacked down to this the seams are pressed open so I know this is going to be enclosed in lining but it still looks quite neat um, with all the seams pressed open and that helps to keep um, <clears throat> excuse me a lovely flat seam on the outside as well so just to show you, I misread the last step. I'm not going to include that in the edit, but I'd sewn it um, across the top. What you need to do is stitch um, these two ends together and then the same on the other side. And then you should be able to fold back the face in and connect the top. So I'm going to do those stages now and then come back. So just to um, make that step clear, so you basically stitch in the two interfaced sections together at each end so I'm going to press it up and I'm going to pull the facing round and clip it together and stitch it together along the neckline next so I'm just going to do that stage now okay so I've stitched the neck facing to the jacket now at the cut I've under stitched it um, and I've just turned it around and given it a press just to get these corners out, I use a bamboo point turner. I think it's Merchant and Mills. I've had this a while because I like making shirts. Um, and I just go in and push that out. But obviously don't push it so you stretch um, the wool or the fabric that you're using out too much. So the next stage now is to fold everything in um, at the fold line which is where your interfacing is inside and then give it a press okay so this is all pressed now so it should look something like this and then you have the hem and the next thing is to um, press and pin up the hem um, I think around three centimeters Okay, so I've just I folded this over two centimeters and slip stitched it between the side seams. Um, so I think to hold the hem in place, I think I've done that right. Um, I hope so. Right now to move on to the lining. Exciting! I've got um, the full outer cut is done so I'll be back with the lining and um, just to say as well what I'm going to do is some tests I'm going to use um, a 70 needle for the lining because I'm using silk 
um, and I'm also contemplating changing the colour of the thread as I'm going to use, I was thinking about using pink thread so just to show you this is the silk that I'm using although there is a kind of an orangey red in there maybe it would be okay for the lining to continue to use the orange I might just do that and change the needle it doesn't look too bad does it okay right I'll be back in a while so as I'm using silk for my lining I'm going to use these pins which are um, for fine fabrics um, they're actually beautiful pins this is not an advert um, but I'm just going to recommend these so the Hiroshima pins if you can see them. I've now got two sets of them. I bought them from Cloth and Candy online um, and I love these. I use them for um, rayon and viscose as well so I'm just pinning my pleats down and I'm going to edge stitch these in place. Okay just to show you I've done the test run and I've used a 70 needle and I've changed the stitch down to 2.4 because I'm now using silk so I'm going to go and proceed and stitch the um, the pleats in the lining together. I've now sewn my um, upper back pieces to the back and I'm just wondering I've come to press and I'm thinking that maybe I should finish these seams as they silk um, rather than pressing them up and, and leaving them raw I think it might be safer to overlock these seams um, I don't know there's quite a good seam allowance but then if it starts fraying I should have maybe thought about French seaming them mm. Okay, I think I might get the overlocker out. So just to show you, I decided to overlock um, the seams just to finish them. It's not affected the stitching, uh, but because it's silk and it might fray, I just want to keep the longevity a bit more. So I've got it over my tailor's ham and I'm pressing. Um, and I just want to show you that I'm using a pressing cloth. This is one that I made myself just from this muslin I just did. Um, a rolled hem on the edges of it um, so I'm just using this because I'm using silk I've got my iron set on a lower heat as well and um, just so that I don't damage the lining this is the first time I've sewn with silk so I'm slightly cautious about it but fingers crossed things are going well so far okay so um, I've now sewn the lining together move that out of the way and turned it inside out as per the instructions there's also um, a hole here I've overlocked these seams as well this is where you pull the coat through presumably birthing the coat as it is sometimes referred to so yep this is a lining with the sleeves stitched together inside out ready to go to the next stage I will say now that this is the third day that I've come um, to make this on this, the third evening, um, it's Monday. Okay, I'll report back on the next steps in a boil. I'm not going to be able to show you this very well, but I've basically pinned all of the lining around the edges of the facing and the back neckline to the coat. I've used pins this time because I didn't have enough clips and I thought it might um, keep it stable, but I've not used my fine fabric pins I've used um, standard ones so I'm going to sew it up and then bag it out which um, bagging it out just means you kind of shake it there's no way I'm going to be able to get that on camera but you kind of shake it um, to fill it out make sure that it's all looking neat okay so I stitched the lining together on the inside I also I know it doesn't look that pretty but you won't see it because it'll be enclosed I also um, overlocked the seams as well just to keep the silk from fraying so this is what it looks like to bag out the coat so you pull the outer layer to one side and the lining to another oh, I'm so excited I love this silk I love this combination and um, so this is where I'm at now 
Um, the next step, I think, is to then um, join the sleeves together. Oh, look, Griff is here wanting to say hello <laughs> to everyone. This is how I saw with a puppy um, at my leg. Okay, so that's bagging out. I just want to note that the bagging out stage, you pull um, with the wrong sides out. So I know I was looking at it from the other side, but I've now turned it inside out for the next stage, but just so just to add that. Hi, okay, so I have now pinned the sleeves together. Um, this is day four, so I've just picked this up again. And um, one of the things that I'm gonna do is try and top up how long it's taken me to do this. I haven't really been timing myself, but I've been doing a few hours here and a few hours there. So um, I've pinned the lining to the cut at the sleeve. So what you do is you pin it to um, the sleeve facing. Make sure on this stage that you pin in the right lining to the right sleeve. So obviously it should have the coat facing in the middle of the two. So I'm just going to stitch those together and then there's a neat little trick about adding um, a smaller piece of the lining to the um, between the sleeve, the underarm seam of this and the lining as well so that when you turn it inside out it stays attached so I'm going to do that step as well and then I'll report back and hopefully um, then we'll be on to the hem there are not many steps left I'm quite excited okay so I scratched my head at this point for a minute but this is what I've done with the attaching this little tab to the seam allowances. So I've machine stitched it because I hate hand stitching. So these are both the underarm points. So hopefully that will anchor the sleeve in when I pull them out. Okay, now to do the other side. So I'm just coming to the stage now where I'm stitching the lining to the hem. Um, so just to tell you how I do it, obviously um, I pin the edges, then I do um, where the seams meet, so here and here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it taut and pin the centre point and then pin the centre of that and that and the same again with these, just to make sure that you get it kind of evenly distributed and to make sure that it's even before you stitch it together and then um, it's just the corners and then I get to... Uh, pull it through. Okay, I've sewn the hem facing to the hem lining. Now the last step has confused me a little bit because it says pinch together the remaining one centimetre excess of fabric and hem. I'm assuming it means this and not that I was only meant to have one centimetre left here. If so, something has gone terribly wrong. Um, so I'm going to sew these together and then um, I am going to pull the coat through the lining and let's keep our fingers crossed that it has worked. Okay, back in a bit. Okay, so we're at the moment of truth. So this is what I've done with my corners just to show you. Um, what I'm going to do now is try... So you find your hole at the side and then you pull the entire coat out. I've still got some clips in the hem on the inside as well because I left them on while I was doing the other stages. So I'll just pull those out. Okay, so here goes. So just take your time with this, especially if you've got um, a lining that's delicate like mine. Let's see if I can prop you up a bit. You've got quite a lot of fabric to pull through. Oh. 
I've got glitch spine everywhere. Okay, what you might need to do with the corners, depending on what fabric you're using, is if needs be, get your point turner in there. If you can get your hand through the hole before you complete it and sew it up. Oh, it's exciting. And there we go. One fully lined coat. So I'm going to check it out, and then what I will do, um, I'm going to obviously hand stitch the whole together if everything's okay, and then I will record um, a short video giving an overview of my thoughts, etc., um, and modelling the coat at the very end. Okay, it looks pretty good. Good stuff.